Thanks for coming and checking out another Fat Guy Builds. Today we are doing transmission uh, filters, fluid, the whole service. So that's two filters and a gasket and we're dropping the pan. This is the part number for the outer transmission filter, TF94. Here's the uh, new transmission filter, Beck Arnold Arnley, 044-0315. Uh, for the transmission, we want to get under the car, obviously. You're going to use a pair of oil filter channel locks or your hand. But as you can tell, this car is drenched, drenched in oils. So I'm going to use these pliers here and ugh, start taking this off. Make sure you have a drain pan here. Once you have that outer filter out, we need to drain the pan. So there's a plug here, 17 millimeter. That one's pretty tight. So I'm gonna grab the ratchet, but it's a 17 millimeter socket here, and uh, loosen that up. Now you got the filter and the drain plug out. You're just gonna let it all drain until it barely drips, then put the plug back in. And then we're going to work on taking the pan off. Go around with a 10 millimeter socket and you're going to remove each of these um, bolts all the way around. They're all the same, 10 millimeter. Leave one screw partially in, one bolt partially in. That way when you break it loose from the, you know, all the gasket crap, it doesn't just slam on the floor and make a mess. Once it's done dripping, you're just going to grab a little bit of this. You're going to put it on this O-ring, like so. And then you're just going to screw it on up here. And you're just going to do a hand tight. Don't go crazy and grab tools to tighten it. Just hand tight. There we go. And that's done. So now I need to replace the bottom pickup slash filter. And uh, we need to clean up all this gasket mess that the last person did, which is excessive and horrible. And uh, now it's time to take out your filter, 10 millimeter, all the way around. Take them all out. It has multiple sizes of screws bolts, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we got like three different sizes, super long, medium, and short. When you go to put them back in, I'll explain how to do that in a second. Now that all the bolts are off, you make a mess and drop it like that. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> Shit. Well, don't do what I did. Um, tilt it on one end to drain all the fluid first. You're gonna start off with all the very short ones because the threads start instantly. So uh, you get those partially started, then we're gonna just put them down hand tight and then I'll show you why you wanna do um, the next ones with this pretty much, you know, where it wiggles like this, but it's still all the way up um, because you're gonna be looking for the gap. So let me do that. I grabbed one of the longest ones to make my point. So you're going to look at the gap that's left to understand which one it goes to. See that? That's a shorter one. That's a shorter one. So that's the gap you want right there. It's roughly uh, 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to put them all in by one thread and then show you what it looks like on my car and then hopefully it matches your car. So this is what mine looks like. They're all pretty much even except the two medium size. They stick down over here like so. Um, I did test it. it. They do go all the way in so they're in the right spot but that's that one's a little bit different. This car leaks badly everywhere. So, 
Uh, make sure <clears throat> if yours is clean, you can just go to the next step. But um, need to clean this thing up, and I need to clean the magnet of all the metal shavings. After cleaning all the muck off the pan, we're gonna want to clean the gasket area. Get all the old crap off or as much as possible. The magnet had a bunch, so that's clean now. Once I get the gasket off, I'll spray it one last time with brake cleaner before I put the new gasket and go and reinstall it. That was very tedious, but it's clean. I ended up using this Brillo pad attachment here to help. And uh, I made sure there was nothing in the bottom of the pan. Now I'm going to put a thin layer of right stuff on the flange and then we'll go on to put in the gasket and then another thin layer of right stuff on the other side of the gasket. And when I say thin, I mean thin, okay? Just enough to cover it just like a skim coat, okay? Don't be splooging this stuff everywhere. Alright, there's a skim coat. Line up the gasket so all the holes match. You got this little skinny part here. And this little bump out part here that helps you line it up set it on now I'm gonna put a very skim, uh, skim coat again all right there's a skim coat again but the only reason for this is if you scratch stuff it'll fill in the scratch holes easier than the uh, gasket that comes with it we're gonna go ahead line this back up put all the screws in uh, finger tight there were some of the bolts I didn't really like they were too gummed up with RTV from the last job. So I put in these ones. Um, they're actually 10.8s or overkill. But uh, yeah, so I get it in there. You want to get it um, snug by hand. Then you want to let this set up all the way. So go eat dinner. Uh, come back tomorrow. And it should be all set up. And then I'll go around one more time and just make sure... It feels tight, right? There might be one where it compressed and got a little loose or whatever. So I'm going to let this all sit up and then tighten it in the morning. Otherwise, you could tighten it too much and it'll spooge out. Like you could rip the gasket and everything. But once it's glued, it can't slide or move or anything. I went around, snugged up these. Yeah, some of them were a tad loose. So it's a good idea. Um, just go around, just hand tight. Don't go crazy. You don't want to damage the gasket that you just put. Put in the uh, plug. So here's a dipstick. It's not the one you're going to use, but same idea. There's a high and a low level. It's going to one section is going to be cold. One section is going to be warm or operating temperature. And they're both going to have a high and a low. High and a low. What you're going to do, before you start it, you're going to just fill it until you're at the middle or a little bit above the middle of the cold, high, and low. Okay? Then, while we're checking it for the rest of the time, the car is going to be running. So, you fill it up, get it to here, right? Turn it on, then you're going to check it. And it's more than likely going to go down. So, then you're going to fill it, fill it, fill it, fill it, fill it until the level is in the middle while the car is running. Once it does that, hold the brake, run through all the gears up and down a few times, check the level one more time, okay? If it stayed in the middle of the cold, hot and high and low, then you're gonna just get it up to operating temperature. So let it run, get it to where the thermostat comes up and everything is hot, you can't grab anything with your bare hands. Then check it again. The fluid level should have moved into the hot area of the dipstick and once you're there you're going to put it in the center of the high and the low at the hot setting while the car is hot so the thermostat should be in the middle like your normal driving everything and uh, at that point you can go for a test drive drive it around come back check the fluid again to verify you know while you were driving and was going through the gears, it's still at the same level, right in the middle, on hot, in between high and low. 
I'd like to thank everybody for coming and checking out another Fat Guy Builds. Hopefully this saved you some money. And uh, hit subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. Till next time, wrench on.